because if you look at the mission statements of these higher ed institutions, this is in their mission statement. So how are we strategically thinking about these efforts as a business component to what the public purpose of higher ed truly is? How, what ideas for actions would you give to us so that we can think about how to really work with the presidents and the administration to say, this is why you want to support this, because this is what you're in the business of doing. Uh, in my case, I work directly with the president. Um, he is my supervisor, so I spend time with him. I'm getting ready to train my third president in my 13 years. The new president begins <laughs> uh, July 1st, and so I'm excited to see what that will mean. Um, as we are developing our programming, we start with the mission and ask ourselves, does it fit with the mission of the college? Are we doing the things that we want to do? Um, I don't know if I have a copy of a little bit of that statement here. Real quick to give you. The mission of Westminster College is to help men and women develop competencies, commitments, and characteristics which set apart a group of distinguished human beings. We start right there, and then we go from there. Um, thank you for bringing up that question. I think it's it's a really important question and depends a lot on context. Obviously, at a small college with 700 students, you have a lot more access probably to your university president and administration than, for example, at University of North Florida, where it's a massive public institution. So I think, you know, right-sizing expectations in terms of that makes sense. But I think we start exactly where you started, which is with the identity and the mission of the institution. And I think what we've seen across the country is where it happens without that support. You can do a lot of great interfaith work. You can make certain progress, but it can really only go so far without that institutional support. Um, if anyone's interested, we do have an online resource on our website that's, I think, called Mapping Interfaith Cooperation to Your Campus's Mission or something like that that provides some examples of campuses that have gone through this process in a really thoughtful way as well as some questions to think about if you're looking to do this for your institution. So I think being able to really know your mission inside and out and be able to articulate what it is about whatever, whether it's civic engagement or whether it's interfaith cooperation or interfaith civic engagement, you know, being able to map that really directly onto your institution's unique mission and values. And for a church affiliated institution, mapping that to, you know, your religious affiliation as well, um, I think can be really powerful in garnering administration support. And if anyone wants to see that resource, let me know and I'm happy to send it to you. You can also find it on our website. Shelly doesn't have anything, but I was, it just occurred to me that our president, who's just retiring, went with us on our spring break trip last week. And over his tenure, he went on three or four different ones. So I think that commitment starts at the top. And if that happens, then everyone else kind of follows. Um, I, so I agree with that completely, and I think there are cases where people have been able to influence the administration bottom up. So I just want to yeah. add that component as well, especially to all the students in the room. Um, one of my favorite stories from last year was from Prince George's Community College, where they, for their annual day for the interfaith movement in the spring, Better Together Day, it's a national, national day for the interfaith movement, they actually set up a ball pit in the middle of their campus and had about 250 students come through and have conversations in a ball pit and build relationships that way. And they, they lobbied their university president. They went to their president and said, we're doing this day. Will you participate? Will you sign the Better Together Day pledge to support interfaith cooperation? And their president said yes. So I think that's a great example, too, of where you know sometimes the administration is going to say, we want to prioritize this. Let's work on it. And sometimes students or staff can actually say, we think this is important. Here's the, here are the reasons why. And sometimes you're able to garner support that way as well. Thank you.